Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at Hollyton United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Dave. Uh, Later this morning, you'll find today's message on our website as well as our uh, Charge YouTube channel and Facebook page. You'll also be receiving this message via email, and for those of you who are without email, it will be arriving in your mailbox later this week. Um, As we get ready for a time of prayer together, all praises and prayer requests for each Sunday morning can be reported when you enter, and uh, uh, if you have forgotten that, then uh, you can text me now at area code 716-560-4399, and I'll include those requests. If you're joining me online, uh, joining us online, I should say, then you can use that number as well. Text me any concerns or, or praises that you have, and be sure that I'll be praying, lifting those up before the Lord as well. Uh, Singing during the service is now on pause, but you may certainly hum along to any music that you like. Uh, Please continue to wear your masks throughout the service. Uh, If you have been notified that we will continue with our regular uh, worship services, our our regular order of service uh, for uh, the foregoing for the foreseen future. Um, But after today's service, an opportunity for singing along with the praise band and and or the organ will be afforded to those who have been designated as singer. Uh, you may maintain remain remain in your seats when the service is over, and uh, if you are not so designated, then you'll be dismissed by the ushers after the benediction. Please refrain from con- congregating inside the church following the service. So let us let us pray together. Lord God, we come to you as those in need of a deeper discipleship and relationship. We want to grow more deeply in our love for you and for our neighbor. We recognize that in a global society, our neighbor may be halfway around the world. And your church also is is worldwide in scope. It includes people of every nation and tribe and people and language. Be with us, Lord, as we learn to see one another with new eyes, as we hear one another with new hearts and treat one another in new ways. We're so grateful, Lord, for your presence with us each and every day. We thank you for the care and the guidance that you give us all along our journey. We praise you for always hearing and answering our prayers. We're thankful, Lord, that today, today we have the opportunity to celebrate with one another as we uh, celebrate Sally's birthday. We pray your blessing upon her today. We're grateful for uh, moving ever closer to that Thanksgiving holiday, another time of great celebration. We thank you, Lord. We, we, We are blessed by all that you have provided for us. Lord, those requests that we carry in our hearts we now give to you along with with concerns for Nancy who has broken her hip, for Dale and Sherry as they prepare to travel, for Judy and for Carl and Ellie, Linda's Linda's family who are having issues with chronic illness. We also want to pray for Kathy and Carly. Lord, each of these needs your touch in a very specific way. Many are in need of healing. We pray for your protection and for your encouragement, Lord. Use us to offer hope and help where we can. Lord, 
we know that your resources have no end. You can heal and provide for every single need. And we offer ourselves to you along with these, Lord, all of the, the brokenness that goes with it. The need of spiritual, emotional, and physical healing. We trust you. For we know that by grace, through faith, you are working out your plan for each one of us. Now, Lord, in that faith, we lift up our voices together, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, we, we know that God is generous and faithful, patient and loving with us blesses us with so many ways. And as we move toward the Thanksgiving holiday, we're especially thankful for God's goodness to us and, and for God's invitation to us to offer of a, a portion of, of all that he's given us. I encourage you to give generously as the Lord directs you. Of course, you can give as... Uh, uh, you enter worship. You can give online from our website, hcfumc.weebly.com, and uh, you can also mail your offerings in. Let us take a moment now and reflect on God's blessings to us.
God our Father, we are grateful for this, the great, the many ways that you continually bless us. And we thank you also for the invitation that you give to us to participate in your abundance by our giving. We recognize, Lord, that you give all good gifts to us and of all that we have received, so now we make our offering. Receive our gifts, joyfully offered to you. Bless them and multiply them and use them for your good purposes. Now, Lord, we pray that you speak to us through this morning's message. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that we may clearly hear your voice. Open our eyes that we may see your plan before us and our hearts that we may respond faithfully to what we hear today. And may we deeply sense your presence as we worship together in this hour. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn is Rejoice, the Lord is King. Thanksgiving Eve service uh, this Wednesday night. Um, my wife and I are putting a service together and that'll be available to you online and on uh, all of our websites and uh, on Facebook as well. As I read scripture, I find that God seems to give a lot of attention to shepherds. Throughout the Old and New Testaments, we find narratives and stories about shepherds. Some of them good, some of them bad. While sheep and other livestock represented an owner's wealth in the scriptures, 
The shepherds were often looked down upon as unworthy or uh, of honor or consideration. They were, they were on the fringes of society and fulfilling a menial yet important task. They not only were responsible for providing adequate food and water, but also protection from predators. A daunting task at best for all the credit they received. And yet we, we know that we know of a young shepherd boy, almost forgotten, who is established as Israel's king. You know him as David, a lowly shepherd of sheep who would become the shepherd of the sheep of Israel. With the lessons learned and, and the skills gained from caring for his father's sheep, he would, be, he would come to lead the nation of Israel for 40 years. Then you may recall the story of shepherds watching their flocks during the night when suddenly angels appeared among them with news of a Savior being born, Christ the Lord, a story we're going to hear again before too long. These shepherds in the field that night were some of the first people to see the Lord, which gives us an indication that those who are on the fringes are very important to God. This same baby would later call himself the good shepherd. He would be forever compared with those who were poor shepherds. He would stand alone above all other shepherds throughout the scriptures and in the world, even those who were good ones. And quite frankly, I'm not sure that the label good shepherd is good enough. For he is the best shepherd. Well, today we're going to hear a little more about the good shepherd, but I think you'll be a little surprised by, by what you hear. Listen carefully to the word of the prophet Ezekiel, from Ezekiel 34, verses 11 to 24. Hear now the word of the Lord, and may God add blessing to the hearing. The Lord proclaims, I myself will search for my flock and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out the flock when some in the flock have been scattered, so will I seek out my flock. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered during the time of clouds and thick darkness. I will gather and lead them out from the countries and peoples, and I will bring them to their own fertile land. I will feed them on Israel's highlands, along the riverbeds, and in all the inhabited places. I will feed them in good pasture, and their sheepfold will be there on Israel's lofty highlands. On Israel's highlands, they will lie down and secure in a secure fold and feed on green pastures. I myself will feed my flock and make them lie down. This is what the Lord God says. I will seek out the lost, bring back the strays, bind up the wounded, and strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy, because I will tend my sheep with justice. As for you, my flock, the Lord God proclaims, I will judge between the rams and the bucks among the sheep and the goats. Is feeding in good pasture or drinking clear water such a trivial thing that you should trample and muddy what is left with your feet? But now my flock must feed on what your feet have trampled and drink water that your feet have muddied. 
So the Lord proclaims to them, I will judge between the fat and the lean sheep. You shove with shoulder and flank, and with your horns you ram all the weak sheep until you've scattered them outside. But I will rescue my flock so that they will never again be prey. I will even judge between the sheep. I will appoint for them a single shepherd, and he will feed them. My servant David will feed them. He will be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be their prince. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, I have been sent here to shepherd you. And you may consider me a good shepherd, you may consider me a bad shepherd, or, or even somewhere in between. That's just the reality of life. It's the reality of being a pastor. The truth is, though, the first ten verses of this chapter are particularly frightening to me especially during the unusual circumstances of this year. And while they, the, 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 those verses refer to Israel's kings, the words still strike at the heart. I'm not going to share those verses with you now, but if you really want to know what they say, and I encourage you to look it up, you can read it later. Ezekiel 34. The verses that we've heard here today direct, speak directly of God as the good shepherd, or maybe better yet, the best shepherd. The care that God is, would give is the antithesis of the irresponsible shepherding of the kings of Israel. And this this text is undoubtedly a, a, a reflection on Psalm, Psalm 23. There are some very familiar moments in it. As I reflect on this text and, and on Psalm 23, I think about that spot where it says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. God is going to feed the flock in green pastures. And, and when we get a little unruly and we want our own way and we want to go elsewhere, he's, he will make us to lie down in the places that are good for us. Here in, in this text, the Lord proclaims, I myself will search for my flock and seek them out. That's encouraging news. Now, many of you have been worried about the impact of COVID-19, this pandemic, on our church attendance. I understand that. As we look around today, we certainly see that there are a lot of folks that we love and care about who are missing. And they're missing for a variety of reasons. And some, we don't even know the reasons. And we're concerned about whether or not they will return. It has certainly been a dark time for all of us. Those concerns are real. For the church has not been able to meet the needs of the people in the same way that it has in previous days. So some have indeed scattered. But but I want you to listen again to what God says. I seek out my flock. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered during the time of clouds and thick darkness. I think that that, that verse speaks so profoundly to where we are in these days. This, this COVID pandemic is the, that clouds and thick darkness for no matter where we are, what we think about what's going on, we still have unanswered questions, unsolved problems, 
and an unknown future. It doesn't get any cloudier than that. But God will rescue those who are missing from the flock. Rescue them from all the places where they were scattered during this time. That truly ought to give us hope. That's not to say that we should neglect participating and reaching out to people. We know that there are some of our number who are out sick. Some who are dealing with COVID. But we also know that there are those who are not connected in any way that we know of. If some of you are listening today, I encourage you, please, connect with us. Let us know you're out there. Send me an email to tell me that you're watching. The Lord follows with the promise of regathering the people and feeding them in good pasture. There will be security. And, and more than that, God says, I will seek out the lost, bring back the strays, bind up the wounded, and strengthen the weak. I, this, is, this is pretty profound. And, and it should give us all a cause to breathe a little bit easier about what we're experiencing here in worship. About what we see in our midst. Or, better yet, who we don't see. For God is literally reversing those things that we read about in the first ten verses of this chapter. Reversing the neglect of the kings, the shepherds, to, to strengthen the weak, heal the sick, bind up the wounds, bring back the strays, and seek the lost. Finally, we have the wonderful messianic promise that Jesus himself fulfills for us. Verses 22 to 24 tell us, I will rescue my flock so that they will never again be prey. I will even judge between the sheep. I will appoint for them a single shepherd and he will feed them. My servant David will feed them. Again, God is reflecting in the scripture here upon David as a shepherd of sheep who is responsible for protecting and feeding his father's lambs. And God has made him king of the nation to shepherd the people, to feed the people. And he goes on to say, he will be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be their prince. I, the Lord, have spoken. He said it, and I believe it. I hope you do too. For the reference to my servant David is a reference to the family lineage of Jesus himself. The great shepherd of our souls. In the beginning of chapter 34, we read an indictment of Israel's shepherds. And then God affirms that he will not be like the other shepherds. But in verses 17 to 21, we read some difficult words related not to those shepherds, but to the sheep themselves. We need to listen again to this. God says, As for you, my flock, the Lord God proclaims, I will judge between the rams and the bucks among the sheep and the goats. 
Is feeding in good pasture or drinking clear water such a trivial thing that you should trample and muddy what is left with your feet? But now my flock must feed on what your feet have trampled and drink water that your feet have muddied. So the Lord God proclaims to them, I will judge between the fat and the lean sheep. You shove with shoulder and flank and with your horns, you ram all the weak sheep until you have scattered them outside. Here is, interestingly enough, not a separation of the sheep from the goats. They're included together in contrast to that uh, which Jesus spoke about. But here is a separation of the, really, the, the spiritual bullies from those who are bullied by them within the church. God promises to judge or arbitrate between the strong and the impressive members of the flock and their weaker victims. You see, God is dealing with justice here. It's it's bad enough that the people were experiencing the injustice of their leaders. But now, that has flowed downhill into the body itself. Mistreatment of one another is unacceptable. Those in the church who judge others who judge other Christians. Now, this is all inside. Who judge other Christians because they are in a different place on their spiritual journey. Those who emotionally and spiritually push others around are judged all the more harshly. And of course, this includes all of our church's leaders, including the pastor. We need to be warned. Then there are also those who are perhaps not as spiritual as they think they are. They're often known as the squeaky wheels, those, those ones that, that we need to keep happy, the ones that, well, you know how the story goes, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? They are the ones that muddy the waters and trample the pastures. In other words... The unspiritual in the church also push around those who are more spiritual, making a mess of the church by causing believers to scatter to places that they feel are safe and healthy. You know, every church has those people they call, they call church hoppers, right? Right? They get a little dissatisfied in one place and they run to another place and they continue to move and move and move. But sometimes there are those who legitimately leave a congregation because they're bullied out. And so they go someplace where they they find safety. Well, those who are bullies, God is going to deal with He's going to sort out the righteous from the unrighteous in the church. Here again, these these are issues of social justice, and they don't exist only outside of the church. There's plenty out there, plenty of injustice in the world. But according to the verses that I just read, it also takes place. It's also an issue even within the body of Christ from time to time. Now, granted, we are all broken people in need of God's healing touch. And because of our own brokenness, when we get into uh, positions of leadership and authority, we need to be careful. Because we have a tendency to work to get our own way. And we can actually slow down the work of Christ in our midst. We have a responsibility to treat one another as God has treated us with a deep, deep love, with mercy and grace. 
and all under the authority of Christ, our true King. You and I, we need to submit to the authority of Christ that indeed our words and our actions and our attitudes as well you know, sometimes attitudes speak louder than words. That all of that may be subjected to the will, the words, the attitudes of Jesus. Oh well, Lord God, we confess that too often we have been like sheep without a shepherd. We have not been wholeheartedly devoted to you. We have failed to obey you, and we have shied away from your will, broken your law, and rejected your love. We've not loved our neighbors, and we've not responded to the, to the cry of the needy. In fact, We've struggled to get our own way. Forgive us, we pray. And free us that we may joyfully obey you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh God, we're so grateful for the good news that Christ died for us while we were still sinners, proving the depths of your love for us. Thank you. Thank you for your forgiveness, for your love, for your grace. And thank you for calling us beyond ourselves. In Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is Jesus Shall Reign. <laughs>